Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that is very important to all of us, and that's our roads and our transportation, our bridges and everything else. Um, we're going to be talking about the roads in the 95th District, but actually beyond that. And I have a very special guest with me this evening, and uh, she's the Commissioner of Transportation for the for the New York State Department of Transportation Commissioner and Joan McDonald. We're so glad to have you here. Um, you've been uh, commissioner for I've been Commissioner how many? Sandy for four years. Uh, mm -hmm. I started uh, with Governor Cuomo on, I actually started on February 1st of 2011. Uh, the governor started on January 1st. Uh, it was the day he gave his first budget message, uh, but from a transportation standpoint, it was a statewide snow event. So I started the, uh, my tenure as commissioner uh, by fire or by snow, as the saying goes, <laughs> with, uh, uh, with a snowstorm in Albany and Buffalo, Rochester, all across the state. Right, what a way to begin. And then of course, this year, we've had uh, the winter of 2013, winter 2014 combined, because it really started, our snow really started very, very early in the season. So you must have been under a lot of pressure. It did start very early. And uh, one of the great things uh, that I enjoy about my job is uh, uh, the professionals at New York State Department of Transportation, the men and women who work there, they're just terrific. Uh, we have had our share of weather incidents uh, between uh, Superstorm Sandy, uh, Hurricane mm -hmm. Irene, and Superstorm Lee. And this year especially, uh, it started out, uh, the snow came early, and uh, I don't know when uh, the Weather Channel started naming snowstorms, but we had Hercules uh, was, was our first one right after uh, uh, the July, f uh, the New Year's Day holiday. And, uh, oh, so now we're naming snowstorms. Now we're naming snowstorms. Snow and, oh, okay. uh, you know, from, from a tracking <laughs> standpoint and, and DOT tracking our resources, that's helpful. But uh, one of the things that always interests me is when, when I wake up in the morning and uh, I see, okay, there's a snowstorm coming, a, a nor'easter, uh, and the, the dueling uh, computer programs. Is it going to is it going to be offshore? Is it going to hit the hit the Hudson Valley? And how are we going to deal mm -hmm. with them? Now, are you one of those people that have to get up very early in the morning, or other people on your staff? To, I know with schools, they have to make this decision fairly early about whether there's going to be school. And I'm assuming you have to figure out if you close a, a road, which just happened here and there. Yes, um, it's a it is an amazing logistical process. Uh, we actually begin our phone calls. Uh, across the state uh, 24, 48 hours in advance. Uh, we track the weather system. We work with uh, uh, the Department of Homeland Security. And what we do is each of the regions, New York has uh, 11 regions here in the Hudson Valley, it's region eight. Mm -hmm. uh, they assess what the snow is gonna be, what their resources are, and if we have to deploy resources from other parts of the state, uh, we do that uh, for Hercules, uh, January 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, uh, right after the Christmas holidays. Uh, we had people from Buffalo, Rochester, Watertown come down to the Hudson Valley and Long Island. And that's a real logistical feat because uh, getting those heavy pieces of equipment um, and people down here and then getting them rested so they can assist in the snowplow operations uh, uh, that's a that's a major ordeal getting them lodging stuff right, that we take for say, granted. Right, yes, right, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then uh, as far as road closures go, we have those discussions directly with the governor. It is mm -hmm. uh, myself, uh, Joe D'Amico, the superintendent of state police, uh, Tom Madison from the Thruway Authority, and Jerry Howard from Homeland Security, and we weigh uh, the impact of closing it versus not closing it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's never an easy one uh, because if we close it and nothing happens, uh, it can have an, an impact on business. But you know, we think better to err on the side of uh, conservatism and not have any any accidents. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember this past winter looking at some of the southern states that um, are not used to snow or ice, and um, 
because they decided you know, not to really take action. You, you saw the lineup of cars and the accidents and nobody going anyplace right. uh, for a long period of time. And I think it was soon after that that uh, there were some issues with 84, which can get, you know, very severe um, weather and, and just a pile, you know, a lot of cars on 84. And also the throughway. I think there were a couple of times where there was a closure this year, and it, was, it seemed like a very good decision in it, my mind. It, I agree. It was, it was the right decision. Uh, the topography of I-84 from the Pennsylvania border to the Connecticut border, it's very hilly. And mm -hmm. uh, you get uh, two side-by-side -side tractor trailers, and if they can't make it up the hill, uh, that has a ripple effect, and uh, we thought it was it was the safer decision uh, to close it. And we work very closely with uh, with the New York State Motor Truck Association uh, mm -hmm. to let them know, and with our county governments and local governments, so they can get the word out. And uh, we posted on 511, which is our website, and on our variable message signs. So uh, we try to be as proactive as we can to give people uh, advance warning. Right. And the best, I mean, I'm a believer in staying home, so yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm, with you, I'm with you. I'm with you. And more and more people can stay home because they can actually do a lot of work at home these days yes. with uh, all of our technology. Yep, telecommuting but, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, is much more a way of, uh, of today's world uh, than it was 10, 15 years ago. Right. It's much easier. Joan, I'm just thinking about the New York works because I, you know, I, I drive in the morning, I'm up the Taconic, I'm down the thruway, I'm 84, you know, I, I'm various places and I see these signs, New York works. And I'm always so proud of it because I'm involved with the budget process, yes. which is trying to get the money so that um, your department can, can do the work on the roads. What are some of the big projects that are going on here in the state with the New York Works program? Well, it's, it's interesting, Sandy, because um, I want to talk a little bit about, put it in the framework of what the state is doing versus what the federal government is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, New York uh, State gets approximately 40% of its uh, funding for roads and bridges from the federal government. And up until 2005, uh, which was our last uh, five-year uh, transportation bill, uh, the money was steady. Uh, vehicles were not as fuel efficient. Uh, uh, the federal gas tax is what, uh, is what really funds uh, the Highway Trust Fund. Um, and. Uh, What's been happening over the last several years is, uh, in spite of uh, uh, all the best efforts of our, our congressional delegation, who have been very, very proactive in that regard, uh, the federal government, the funding has not held up the way it, it should. And states are stepping up to the plate and plugging the holes. And the New York Works program uh, in the 2012-2013 budget was a major initiative of the governors and the legislature. Uh, where you all uh, added significant more funding to our mm -hmm. capital program. And here in, uh, for Department of Transportation, we got an additional $1.2 billion. Uh, our normal program is about $1.5 to $1.6 billion a year. So that, that did two things, uh, which, uh, which you're very well aware of. It, uh, it made investments in our roads and bridges. But it also put people to work. All right, and that was one of the major issues because the construction field, uh, after our economic slump, 2007, 2008, and so it was construction was just down to having I don't know a very small percentage of the workers were really working. A absolutely, that was one of the hardest hit areas. And usually in construction, um, if the public sector is soft. Mm -hmm. The private sector is going strong, and that uh, economic downturn that you mentioned, they were both down. So mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the unemployment rate uh, was, was very high in the 20s for the construction industry. So, uh, uh, so you and other members of the legislature and the governor was like, we can put people to work, and we can accelerate projects and accomplish mm -hmm. two great things. So here in the Hudson Valley, uh, the biggest project, of course, under New York Works is the Tappan Zee Bridge. Um, but one of our signature projects is uh, 119 in the Sprain Brook uh, Parkway, which is about a $30 million project, which is nearing completion, which really which replaced the bridge deck, but really opened up 119 uh, under the Sprain and made mm -hmm. it much mm -hmm. more community friendly. Uh, it's a, it's really if you haven't seen it, you should uh, take a drive down there. Um, some of our other projects uh, around here, uh, the Amvets Bridge over the Taconic Parkway, 
That's uh, in the Yorktown right, area. Yep, yep. Right, But I think a lot of your constituents probably use they that. They do. Well, so, I, yep, yep. I do. I don't live in your town, <laughs> but I'm certainly going over that, that yep. bridge. And there were there, the bridge is divided. They actually look like two different it is, bridges. It is two, they right, really, right, 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 right. And we, uh, we replaced uh, the northbound bridge from the structure down. Uh, and that we did in 11 months. And one of the mm -hmm. uh, one of the goals of New York Works and uh, one of the goals of uh, Drivers First is uh, is to minimize disruption to the community and get things done quickly. I found that a fascinating project because I really watched it because I was on it. <laughs> <laughs> and how you could take all the traffic you took all the traffic yep. off of the bridge going north, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, the bridge going north uh, closed down. And then you had a lane in each direction on the other bridge. We had, we had a, what we did was we, you're absolutely right, we closed the northbound uh, bridge uh, and what we, we moved all of the traffic to the southbound. But what we did that was unique in this uh, particular project is we extended uh, the lanes further south and, and cut into uh, the right-of-way of the Taconic Parkway mm -hmm, a little mm -hmm, bit more mm -hmm. than uh, we normally would have. Uh, we put a barrier down the middle to make sure that there were no crossovers. We wanted to mm -hmm. ensure the safety of, uh, of the motorists. And we also had uh, arrangements with New York State Police, with uh, the county, uh, with the Yorktown local mm -hmm. police. And during the rush hours, both, both directions, we had uh, tow trucks and uh, police uh, enforcement stationed there so that if an incident occurred, uh, it would very quickly get taken care of. And uh, we monitored the traffic uh, from our uh, uh, Hawthorne Traffic Management Center, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, uh, it, was, it was a real uh, uh, model of how to do things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally came down and spoke to the community uh, before we uh, uh, kicked off that project so right. it was really really good. Now by doing it that way I'm assuming that the northbound bridge uh, was able to get completed easier, faster, less expensive. I, I don't know when, when you're when you have everything going on it seems to me and you're a worker construction person and you've got to pay attention to all these cars going by mm -hmm. you and the safety of everything that's got to be very difficult. It, it is really difficult and safety is uh, everybody's top priority and it's the safety of the driving public and it's also the safety of the workers and um, we uh, the the move over law that uh, you all enacted mm -hmm. uh, uh, several years ago, uh, added uh, DOT and contractors to the uh, to the uh, law enforcement entities mm -hmm. who are covered under the New York law. We're that very means grateful under to the that. New York law move over. You really, when you see somebody working there, you see a, a police officer, you see a car that's disabled. You're supposed to go into Absolutely. the next lane if you can. If, if, if you, you can. can. If, if you can. can. If right. you can. You have to use your judgment. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I drive the roads a lot, and I do see people doing that. And I mm -hmm. think that uh, uh, it it uh, it really you never can quantify how many uh, accidents you've prevented, but we do believe that we have, we have made significant progress there. And uh, um, again, doing things faster, but smarter and safer mm -hmm, is the mm -hmm. way we, we like to move our projects right. forward. I think it works so well. I know in the beginning people were saying, oh, you know, it's going to take me a little <clears throat> bit longer to get to work and so on. But after a while, I, I just felt like people accepted it. Um, you know, they, they knew that there was a concluding mm -hmm. time. And, uh, and it just, it, it did go smoothly. It did go smoothly. So, um, and and one, of the, um, one of the key components of the New York Works program, and... Uh, the design build legislation is the ability for us at the department to use best value uh, when we make a decision as to who to award uh, a contract to. Now, 90% mm -hmm. of our projects are the traditional low bid, uh, straightforward project. But what I'm seeing is since we now can assess the quality of the work that a contractor does and we're expecting them to be more innovative, um, we're getting much better performance on all of our work. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. a great example is the uh, Dingle Ridge Road uh, project that we did on, on I-84. where we Is that the bridge? That is, the yep. bridge that got built somewhere else, I it got, think? It got built, <laughs> it did. It got, it got the, the decks were precast. Uh -huh. um, and what we did was we 
closed, uh, closed, uh, closed it in one direction one weekend, and the, uh, that was the westbound direction, and the eastbound direction two weeks later. And in each of those weekends when we closed, uh, closed it, we, the contractor slid uh, the slabs, the decks in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and did the work around it. And uh, that required coordination with the state of Connecticut and mm -hmm. uh, the city of Danbury. But uh, again, I see how our contractors, how DOT mm -hmm. staff, they're really looking at innovation mm -hmm. in a new way. Had that way. happened before? Is that, is that kind of like a, a new model? It's an, it's a, it is a new model, mm -hmm. and it, uh, it, uh, we've, we've done it a little bit, um, but our procurement process didn't allow us to do it to the level that we can now do it under the mm -hmm. design-build model. And mm -hmm. uh, um, again, sometimes uh, schedule impact to drivers, you weigh that versus mm -hmm. uh, uh, versus the cost of construction and uh, sometimes getting a project done in three months versus a year uh, makes a right. big difference and it's it's worth it to pay a little bit more so those are the things that uh, that we're excited about and uh, we have ongoing dialogue with both uh, uh, the construction uh, organizations uh, CIC and Ross Pepe here in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Hudson Valley and the building trades um, mm -hmm. because it really requires uh, everybody to be partners, right. and uh, and everybody looks to be innovative, and mm -hmm. it really serves the the general public overall. Is there any innovation in the asphalt uh, that's being used? Anything applied to the roads, the surface of the roads? Is there anything? You know, it's we in? we we are always looking. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, looking back at this at this winter uh, with the. Uh, uh, the various stages of freeze and thaw, which I think everybody uh, uh, is experiencing potholes, not mm -hmm. just on state roads, but uh, on local roads and city streets. And it's a, uh, it's a, it's a dilemma for everybody. And we look for different materials. Uh, right now, we mostly use uh, what's called hot mix asphalt, because that mm -hmm. lasts longer. Um, and then depending on the extent of the, uh, of the potholes, we, uh, uh, we, we do a full, uh, you know, mill and fill. Um, mm -hmm. There is a company that uh, has what they call a pothole killer that we've, mm -hmm. we've used pretty successfully. Goes up a lane and uh, does a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. Well, I know some of the new things, you, you've been doing a lot of kind of new things in my district too, and I'm thinking that um, on, route, on Route 9 up in the Putnam area, mm -hmm. Um, you were trying out those rumble, you know, we have rumble strips on the side of yes. our roads and, and uh, you know, I appreciate them because I think if, if you ever deviate a bit, it, it, it certainly wakes you up and, you know, if you're tired right, or you, right. you haven't. And, and you, were, you tried in a certain area from the Cortland side starting into um, Putnam the, in the center. Yes, yes. And I know that was kind of like a new, new thing. Yes. I, I tend to think it's worked well. It has. I, it's, they're called uh, Centerline Audible Roadway Delineators, or CARS. Oh. E all of us in the transportation world love ac acronyms, and okay. uh, the, the traffic engineers probably love them more than anybody. And they do. They, they are, they're, they're center lane rumble strips that mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. absolutely correct, if uh, I've done it, I think anybody's done it, you, you know, you, 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 you get a little bit distracted and you, you get on that rumble strip and you're like, ooh, mm -hmm, gotta, mm -hmm. veer, gotta move back to the other direction. Um, and it's, uh, we, we are in a plan to install them uh, across the state where it makes sense mm -hmm, and where mm -hmm. we can practically fit them in with, uh, with our capital program. Mm -hmm. um, the federal government uh, has placed a high priority uh, on safety. One mm -hmm, of the few mm -hmm. areas where they did increase funding is in the safety area. And uh, we're putting significant resources into that. Mm -hmm. So in that, and then afterwards, it hasn't been so long. I, I think after, you, you always look at accidents. I know <coughs> when we called Department of Transportation, just, you know, should there be a light here? Should mm -hmm. there be this, that? And they would say, well, you know, we, we look at the accident rate and what's happening. I'm not sure that we're there yet on that. But is that the kind of thing that, to, to prove the case that you go back? Or, or do you just instinctively know that it's, it's working better? Well, we, uh, again, you can't, it's, you can't track accidents that you've prevented. Right, you um, can't. But right. what we do is we look at trends. Mm -hmm. And um, we look at three things when we look at trends. We, we look to see uh, what, what types of accidents there were. 
uh, how frequently were there, what were the hours that they mm -hmm. occurred. Mm -hmm. And then we work with, uh, with law enforcement, uh, mm -hmm. the health department, uh, and the education departments because it's a combination of uh, engineering uh, techniques that we apply, mm -hmm. uh, enforcement, and, mm -hmm. um, and also education and letting the public know. And uh, the Governor's Traffic Safety Council is a wonderful vehicle where we all get together and um, share ideas. And uh, uh, we are always looking for ways to, to cut that accident rate down to zero. Mm -hmm. And right. that, that is our goal. Right. That is our goal. One of the, the big projects you had, well, probably isn't a huge project given your projects, <laughs> but um, in, in peak scale on the Bear Mountain Parkway extension, not, not the one going around the Bear Mountain Parkway, although right. I know you've resurfaced that and everything. Um, you can't change the mountain exactly right. on that one. But um, the other Bear Mountain extension where you have, you decided to do, and working with the communities, like different things in different places yes. on that road. Uh, I guess depending upon the entrance ramps mm -hmm. coming in. So you did you did some where you had the steel barriers, you know, ahead of time. Others you had one lane in each direction. Uh, again, I think it's really working well. And and you know, Sandy, we we are the transportation department. And um, what I see when when I travel across the state, and I see it. Uh, very much so here in, in the Hudson Valley and you know northern Westchester, Putnam, um, Duchess. Uh, there's a very, very strong biking, walking community. So when we look mm -hmm. at a, our system, uh, what, uh, what I always tell the engineers, and I'm not an engineer, is we need to look at all the users of, mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. the roadway, not just uh, the cars. And, uh, we have to factor in what the uh, commercial traffic is, what the traffic volumes are, and then um, work with the communities uh, to see what types of uh, biking paths they need. Does a left lane, does a left turn lane work? Uh, how, how do we do those things? And we think mm -hmm. uh, the Bear Mountain Parkway is one of, one of our success stories. We, we worked uh, uh, with, under your leadership uh, with the community and uh, came up with, like you say, solutions that work. Mm -hmm. Uh, at different points along the way. Right. So sometimes a road just isn't natural for just one one program or plan of action. Right. They're uh, right. different ones. So, and I assume one day we'll probably figure out what to do with Route Six, but I'm not quite sure. One we'll day ever. we will. I know. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> figure that one out. <laughs> I, I I'm with you, and I travel it a lot, and it's a uh, uh, it's it's a growing area, and. Uh, uh, it, it, we, we, it, it could it could use some treatments, and we'll we'll get there some right. one of these days. It's interesting because some you know if you if you went back you know before we all settled and had all this development and and the shopping malls and everything else, it'd be so much easier. But once once you start to get all of this activity, I, you can't really go and purchase all this land and, even if you wanted to. And what complicates it here is we have so much of the New York City watershed to deal mm -hmm, with between mm -hmm. the Croton Reservoir. Um, and some of the other reservoirs in the narrow, like that, that one strip between Mayapec and Carmel, where you're mm -hmm. riding right along the reservoir, you, you can't build over the reservoir. So it's, uh, it's always a balancing mm -hmm. act. I have to tell you, Joan, I, I guess my, my constituents communicate with me a lot about roads. Um, I guess just because there are a lot of roads. <laughs> and unfortunately, everything we do with roads is very expensive. Yes. So I, I, I know that you have to uh, you know, think about all those things. But we've had a lot of activity this last year um, in the Osning, Osning to Cortland area on Route 9. Route 9 and yep. some of it going actually into the village of Osning. And I, I just have to compliment you because uh, you and your staff were so helpful in trying to resolve some of the pot or the what they were potholes but they were bumps in the road that because of the the garbage trucks and the other trucks when they go over the bumps in the road when you live next door you you kind of hear that right and you came in and did some flattening out and i know you know all of that is is not easy to do with the old roads that you're not really resurfacing everything as well, you go along. You know, as, as I was saying, when we were talking about our capital program in New York Works, we, every year we do about 1.6 billion in mm -hmm. projects across the state. And um, uh, as you know, it's, it's never enough, uh, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. our responsibility is to, do it, is to do it responsibly and to make sure we're cost effective. And sometimes, um, and this is what I try to impress upon DOT employees, and they're, they're terrific employees, sometimes it is 
a very easy solution. It is a four-way stop sign where one mm -hmm, isn't mm -hmm. if there are some, uh, some accidents, uh, maybe not major accidents. Um, sometimes it is just coming in with a crew and um, straightening out some bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's installing the center lane uh, rumble strips. So it's, uh, and they get out, they get out, they look at the site, mm -hmm. they see what they can do, and, um, and they attack it. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's, there's hundreds of stories happening around the state where we're helping out uh, uh, constituents, and uh, I don't know about them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I always say is uh, transportation affects everybody. Whether, it does. Whether you take a bus, whether you take the train, whether you drive, you bike, so, and people are very passionate about right. their feelings about transportation. Well, sometimes people come to my <laughs> office and say, well, do we really need government and do we need a budget? And I say, well, how did you get to the office? Right. Did you drive on a road? Yeah. <laughs> Were yeah. you on a train? You're not in charge of trains, but are you in the bus system? I mean, how did you how did you move around? Right. And and it is so much a big part of our budget and such an important, important part of our budget. It so, sure is. Um, so I'm sure that legislators just like me convey to you all the time the the things that they hear in their districts just because we're there yes. and um, you know we could stop in the supermarket or whatever and people will just tell us things and but the other thing that's happening I, I mean finding this along Route 9a in the Briarcliff area um, you have uh, you have shopping centers that have developed or become popular with you know certain kinds of coffee shops mm -hmm. and things like that and then all of a sudden the traffic patterns are totally different and that's why it is so very important um, that New York State DOT uh, work with our local officials, work with our local planning boards, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. land use, you know, it's chicken and egg, mm -hmm. land use decisions, roads, and we need, they're, they're iterative, and we need to make sure that as there are demographic changes, um, as town centers change, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. if housing development changes, we need to, we can't rip up roads, uh, that wouldn't be cost effective, but again, different treatments working with uh, uh, the municipalities uh, of our state, uh, we can come up with um, some good solutions mm -hmm. and some good creative ways. Right, but I guess it should be done before planning boards and everybody say, okay, this, this shopping center is great, but they really need, if it's on a road if, that's a state road, yep. they really have to have that conversation beforehand how you're going to get people in and out. Exactly, because, um, you know, when we when we sit down with developers, uh, we say, okay, look, give us your traffic plan, give us mm -hmm. your numbers, and then we will, we will review them and we'll work with the town and say, well, you really do need to have a signal here. You're just not going to be able to, it's going to cause traffic to back up or have an impact, and it might be when school's let, letting out. So mm -hmm. we, we do have those conversations and uh, like to be, uh, uh, good public citizens and work with our, our towns. Well, I thank you so much, Joan, for being on our program and uh, what you do for us in the state of New York as we travel all over our state and uh, continue your good work and we'll try to continue to have the dollars, the resources it's, for you to be able to do these it's things. It's my pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. very much. And thank, thank you, you all, Sandy. all for watching. If you have any special ideas on transportation or anything else, just give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a good evening.